Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this first part, we're going to be looking at information schema at the table. So tables have columns, table constraints, check constraints, column domain usage and domains, referral constraints, and the key column usage. We'll explore each of those in this. <music> The first one we're going to be looking at is information schema dot table. Information schema dot table tells me about table names. Notice that when I'm looking at a database, I have a section called tables and you see all these table names. Well, how can I get those out of the database without using information schema? It would be very, very difficult, but information schema would first this first command is going to tell me how many tables I have in there. And notice that I have 73 base tables and 20 views. Well, I, I've done it myself. I've actually come through here and say, uh, how many tables do I have? Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. I've actually counted them before. Now you don't have to do that. Uh, many times upper management wants to know non-important things like number of tables, number of views, number of rows in a table that they find interest in that. And now we can give that to them. So the first one we looked at was information schema dot tables. And you'll notice that there's two kinds of table types, base tables and views. Let's take a look at the base table. Now base table, I'm going to get everything from table. And notice here that I was able to go get all of the stuff and it really comes down to this, this table name. I want to see all the tables. And you know, once again, we see that there's 73 of them. So easily we can go make a list and then just go cherry pick just the uh, table names out of the list. Isn't that awesome? Let me just show you that. I just copied them all and now I have them in a list. I can send these to someone else. I can do whatever. I could make a drop down combo using, you know, just that data. It was that easy. Now that was the first of these right here. Like when we did this guy right here, we saw that there was two kinds. Now the second one that I'm going to show you is the view. And the view up here, it tells me we have 20 of them. So here I can look at that and say, okay, yes, I do have 20 of them. And these are the view names. So views are SQL statements that go up against data tables. And I can do all kinds of fancy joins and all that to make a view, but it's actually at the table level. And that's pretty sweet. So once again, we've, looked at our information schema tables and it gives us the names of both the table and the view object. Let's move on to the next one. So when I'm going up against information schema columns, it's going to give me those four rows. And notice here that I get the column name, I get its ordinal position. I get its data type. If there's a default value, is it required? But you can see here, I'm using information.columns and that returns me all of the columns that are in a table. Let's look at several. Here was departments. The next one is employee. And notice we have more data. But once again, it's information schema dot columns, column name, ordinal position, data type, default value. Is it nullable? Uh, another word is required suite. And our last one we'll look at is a big table called person person. We saw that in another video, there's rough, there's a little bit more than 19,000 rows in this table. But when we execute this, this is only pulling out the metadata, you know, that create table command. It's telling me my columns, my ordinal position, my data type, the max length, the default values.
And here you can see that I'm going to be using tables. So for all the tables, I'm going to do a left join to see if they have a primary key constraint. Now you can imagine somebody wants you to go through all these tables here to see if all of these have a primary key. Well, this SQL statement right here could do that for you. And you can see here, I have gone through there just with the human resources and I see that all my tables have primary keys. Now, if I wanted to do all of them, notice here, I would not look at any of the schemas. I'll comment this out. And now I will re-execute this. And I remember we had 73 rows and we still have 73 rows and it appears everything has a primary key. Now, this is great. So maybe you can use this query right here to make sure your database that you're working on has primary keys on all of their tables. As an example, let's create a small table that has no primary key and see if the SQL statement makes sense to you. So here you can see I'm going to create a table called no primary key table and notice that I'm just putting three columns in there execute and now I have 74 tables in my database so when I execute this command notice when I scroll down no primary key table there is no constraint there is no primary key here you can see I'm going up information schema dot table constraints and I'm displaying all the constraints that are available select distinct constraint type notice it's the check the foreign key the primary key and unique now you just saw that we have four different constraint types the sql statement that we have here is absolute gold what this will do is it'll show us a matrix of how each constraint type and its count so when we say sum, this sum will sum up every time there is a constraint, we'll add one to this variable. And it will just keep coming down and every time we have one, it just keeps adding. Let's see how this works. And you can see here with, we've looked at these so many times, we should know these, that department has a primary key but no unique key no foreign key and no check check constraints but employee has a primary key one foreign key and six check constraints let's take a look at that so employee columns and you can see these columns here where would we find the check constraints? And there they are. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have six constraints on that table. And now we can easily see this with this matrix. So once again, with this SQL statement in hand right here, this is a standard SQL statement that every database person should have. Excellent. On this SQL statement here, you can see I'm going through the same tables and table constraints. And we're just going to print out the constraint name and the constraint type. And you can see here that as we go through here, we just tell you what's got primary key, foreign key, check constraints, unique. It's a data dictionary dump. That's all this is. And it's nice. It's convenient. <laughs>
You just saw that one table had six of them, but what are they? Well, here we can go through information schema dot check constraints. This is the entire database. And notice we have 89 rows. This is also is a wealth of knowledge. If you don't know what a check constraint is, you can come in here and look how it is done. And then you can add this technology to your database. I do have a video that teaches the check constraint and I go take baby steps and I show you how to do that. But you know, once again, here are some real live examples. This is a good database, AdventureWorks 2019. So you can see here, we can go through and look for the check constraint of type check and kick out a nice little report. And this is something you can have. It's the schema, the table name, the constraint name. These are all check constraints and there it is. These are good to know when we're also doing help desk. A lot of times people don't realize that we have a business rule. Where did that business rule come from? Sometimes we forget about check constraints. But if we give this type of report to our help desk people, this would be one of the first things that they can look at. Make sure they understand our database schema as well. The next thing we're going to be looking at is user defined data types. I have a video that explains how to use them and make them in our database and they are very, very important and we really need to understand how to use them. So let's go figure out where they are stored in this database. So if you come down to programmability, see it where it says types, see where it says users, user defined data types. These are our user defined data types. Now, if we come up there and look at our table, human resources, and the name of the table we want is employee history, notice they don't have any user defined data types. They're simple. They're simple. These are just core data types. But when I look at employee, look at employee, they have this one called flag. Well, that is not a core data type. I don't know anything about that one. And look at department. Department has one called name. Where do they come from? Well, once again, is if you come down here to programability, types, user defined, we have flag, flag is of type bit, and name is type n varchar 50. So user defined data types are aliases to real data types, the core data types, the base data types. Once again, inside of this table, we get to see them all. And they're under the column called data type. So in the tables, salesperson, uh, person, person, where's that at? Person, person. Notice that we have name style and it's a bit. We have name and it's an N varchar 50. So we can actually pull them out of the system and actually look at them through information schema dot column domain usage. And when we execute this over person, person, we can see that our column name is like name style and it's user defined data type is name style. So what does that mean here? So notice here, person, the column name is name style and this user defined data type is name style. First name, user defined data type is name. Middle name is name and last name is name. So as you see, we were able to reverse engineer this database and get the user defined data types 
assigned to a table. Can you imagine if we wanted to create a store procedure that did inserts? Not only could we show them that they're using a user-defined data type, but we could also tell them the uh, base data type. So what I have here is a table that reverses engineers those columns for us and kind of shows you the base versus the user-defined. And you can remember on person person we had four columns. This here is the base data type. And remember, user defined data types are aliases to these. It's still a bit, it doesn't matter what we call that, they're just calling it name style. It's still going to be an n varchar 50, but they're just calling it name. I hope that got through. When we look at the Object Explorer and we scroll down to Program Abilities, Types, User Defined Types, notice that we have a list of User Defined Type names, like Flag is Bit, Name is nvarchar50. But we can also get them out of Information Schema. Let's see how we get those out. And they come from information schema.domains. And here you can see that I have those six that we defined over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have them in domains. And here's the base type. And it kind of tells me about it. So when we're reverse engineering this, this is very easy to find out that, oh, Somebody's using a user defined type. What is this real type? One other feature of a table is the ability to have a foreign key. Some people call a foreign key a lookup table. And how would you do that? Well, here we can go up against the constraints. And notice that they're going up against referral constraints, key column usage, and notice that I have two instances of the key column uses. In one of them, I'm going up against the actual table, and then I go up against the lookup table. And you can see here in the table name salesperson, Salesperson has two foreign keys. The first one is a foreign key from a table points at a primary key of another table. And here you can see from salesperson business identity column points at the employee table, the same column. The second one has a column called territory ID. And you can see that that has a primary key and it also has a thing called territory ID. So foreign keys point at primary keys. That's the only way they work. And the data types of a primary key, I mean a foreign key, they have to be identical. You can have one to many columns that make up a foreign key. Notice these are only using one column. In the first part of this video, we have reviewed the following information schema dot tables, columns, table constraints, check constraints, column domain usage. These were when we were talking about user defined data types, the actual user defined data types, referral constraints. This is where we were talking about foreign keys and the foreign key usage. So you can see here you have two, four, six, you have eight information schema objects that you can use to successfully reverse engineer any table design.